Hey everybody, it's Dana here. Thanks so much for joining me in this video. I want to encourage you this morning and I also want to challenge you this morning. I'm going to share a word with you that's probably not going to be the most popular thing that you've heard this year. As a matter of fact, people don't really talk about this a lot. But this morning when I was actually in my quiet time, I was so convicted by this word and I was like, Lord, I have got to share this. Because honestly, you guys, I am just really bothered with the way that we treat each other. I just am. I think, you know, as I've been looking at my life and, you know, not throwing stones, but I'm, I'm in it, right? I'm in the middle of it because God never gives me a message for other people that he's not first dealing with me on. But, you know, when I look at the way, and I'm talking especially to Christians here. So if you're not a Christian, you can keep watching. I'm going to share a lot of scripture. So if that's going to be offensive to you, you might want to go ahead and turn this video off. But for those of us who actually want to grow and actually want to be the real deal, not just talk the talk, but actually walk the walk, then I want to encourage you to keep watching this. But, you know, as I was thinking about the way that I've seen us treat each other, it breaks my heart. It really does. I did a Facebook post, I think it was about a week ago, where I asked people, specifically non-believers, why they don't attend church. And that post got so much engagement. And what I heard from people is that it's the way that they were treated in the church. It was hypocrites, but it was also church hurts. It was not feeling like they were validated. It was being ignored. It was not having their needs met. And I just think, you know what? When are we going to stop making excuses for each other as believers? And when are we actually going to be the body, to actually be the hands and feet of Jesus like he commanded us to be? And so this morning as I was reading in Romans, Romans 15 and then 14, Romans 15 is all about pleasing others, not ourselves. And I know that this goes against our culture, right? Because our culture teaches us, do you, you know, do what makes you happy. Don't worry about other people. Stop living to please other people. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible actually teaches exactly the opposite, pleasing others and not just ourselves. I'm going to read you something real quick. Romans 15, chapter, uh, chapter 15, verse 2. Listen to this. It says, each of us is to please his neighbor for his good, to build him up. Even Christ did not live to please himself. Like, what the world? So if Jesus Christ didn't live to please himself, why are we living to please ourselves? Why are we only thinking about what makes us happy, what brings us peace, what our little circle of friends wants to do? Why do we live like that when we've been told to not live that way? We've been told to look at other people, other believers especially, and live to please them. You know, the Bible talks about people who have a form of godliness, but denying its power. Listen to this in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And this is, again, talking to the church. It's not talking to unbelievers. Listen to this. Verse two, I'm sorry, chapter three, verse two says, for people will be lovers of self. I could stop right there. For people will be lovers of self. This is talking about in the last days, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving. There it is for a second time. Irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Here it is, holding to the form of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid these people. Avoid these people. You know, when I think of that, I'm like, oh my God, Lord, this is, this is the church. This isn't the world. This is, this is us. Who has the form of godliness but denies the very power? How do we do that? This is how we do that. When we talk the talk, but we don't walk the walk. When we say things that we don't live out, when we tell other people to do stuff that we're not willing to do ourselves, that's having the form of godliness, but denying its power. And so I was so convicted and so um, really challenged and encouraged as I read today, because I thought, you know what, as a mom, I hate when my kids don't get along. I hate it. I hate when they argue. I hate when they put each other down. I hate when they're, you know, jealous of each other. And one person has something good that happened to them in school and the other person has to come and try to one-up them. As a mom, I hate that stuff. And God was like, I hate it too. I hate it when I see my children down there on earth striving, being envious of each other, being insecure. Some of you are turning this video off right now because you got stuff going on in your heart that you won't just submit to God. You won't say, God, I need help with this. We have to start seeing ourselves, or I'm sorry, seeing others 
as helpers, not hindrances. We have to stop competing against each other. I did a, a message for City Life, which is our young adult ministry at, at the church that I go to, and it was all about jealousy. And it's something that we don't like to talk about. We rather talk about like other things, but we don't really talk about the stuff that like affects us in our daily lives. You know, when I was growing up, I had this particular person who would always try to copy everything that I did. And it made me so frustrated. And I would go to my mom and I would say, mom, why is this person doing this? How come when I would get a new, a new outfit, that person had to get a new outfit. I get my hair done this particular way. This person would, it would always copy everything that I did. It was so annoying. And my mom said, Dana, the only reason that she's doing that, he or she, I'm not outing anybody. The only reason that this person is doing that is because they admire something in you. You know, we need to be a people who go to other people and say, I admire that in you. I want more of that in my life. Can I spend time with you? Why don't we do that? Because it makes us vulnerable because none of us wants to be rejected. What if that person doesn't want me in their circle? What if they don't want to give to me what they have? And I've just made a decision earlier in the year that I'm just going to live my life vulnerably. You guys can probably go back and look at some other videos that I've done earlier this year. It's all about that. It's all about being vulnerable. It's all about not living in shame, not living in fear, not comparing ourselves to other people. This is how we are supposed to live. But the message today, and the thing that I really want to challenge and encourage you with, as I've been challenged and encouraged, is to stop just living for yourself. Stop just living for what makes you happy, what makes what would make you look good to other people, how you can use people to advance your own purposes. How about you decide that I am here to help lift the load of somebody else? I am here to help my brother or sister. I am here to be a, a, a helper to them and not a hindrance, to not throw a stumbling block in their way, to not try to out them or to try to ice them out, but I'm here to actually help them grow. And I really feel that if we begin to do this, we won't have the Facebook comments that talk about, I don't want to go to that church because this person you know, didn't um, ever even take the time to get to know my name. Like I'm horrible with names. I used to run the database. Actually, I still do run the database at my church. That's one of the jobs that I do there. And I love that because I know everybody's names. But then I meet somebody and I look at their face and I'm like, oh, dang. You know, there's this girl. Oh, my God. I embarrass myself all the time. And there's this girl that I went up to her and I had never seen her before. But apparently, I had been in the same meeting with her for the past six months. And I was like, what? tell me what your name is again. And she's like, you know. And she starts going into this conversation. I felt so stupid. So I'm bad with names. And that's one of the things that I'm asking God to help me with is because, you know, there's something simple about saying somebody's name. There's something about looking somebody in their face and saying, hi, Tasha. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Mike. Hey, so-and-so. That really validates people. Sometimes we're like, oh, I want to change the world. I need this great big ministry. And God's like, no, you don't. You just need to start right where you are and treat people with love, treat people with compassion, treat people with respect, treat people the same way that you want to be treated. None of us wants to be rejected. None of us wants to be constantly judged all the time. So stop doing that to other people. So again, I hope that you enjoyed this message today. Go back and maybe look up these scriptures at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and Romans 15 and allow God's word to sink deep into your heart. Let's be one, guys. That's what we're called to do. We're called to be one. We're not called to be these individual people with our own stuff going on all the time. God wants us to be one. Think of yourself as one of his kids. And ask yourself, how am I treating my brother or sister? Is this making my dad proud? If not, change it. So thanks again for watching. Share this video if it meant anything to you, if you think somebody else could be encouraged by it. I love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next time. Bye.